information. There's three sessions that uh, other my colleagues are going to be presenting at as well, and I believe uh, Dr. John Bess, uh, KG6K, uh, will be up uh, this afternoon, and he's a retired uh, PhD from uh, IBM, so he he'll get into the more of the technical aspects of code development and such. But what I want to talk about is uh, contesting. I, I run a multi-multi station up in New Hampshire. I'm a California boy from way back. One thing that's nice about living in the New England area is that you could uh, build big towers and and certainly uh, put up some, some good arrays to uh, uh, work contesting. And so uh, George, the, the founder of uh, this thing called Hamstack, who's here at, uh, at the show, and Dr. John Bess, uh, they introduced me to microcontrollers. I'm an RF engineer, and I thought, gosh, I'll give this a shot. On a, on a contest type environment. And so that's what I'll be talking about, is the things that I use with microcontrollers for running a contest station. Uh, there's George, uh, K6VU, uh, uh, KJ6K, and again, centered on this ham stack, which is a PIC uh, microcontroller. And the first thing that I did is, uh, how can I control the stacks? Uh, running a contest station, it's all about uh, a lot of aluminum, a lot of uh, antennas up in the air. And stack Yaggies uh, are, are one of the key uh, elements that, uh, you know, for any, any contest uh, type environment. And uh, one thing that I've learned, and I was talking to, to Tom uh, just a little while ago, living up in the Northeast, one of the big challenges, as I think we all well know who live there, is uh, there's some pretty darn extreme weather. Uh, certainly ice loading. This happened in Halloween. Uh, some, some major uh, ice load on these antennas. Uh, if you can see on the, the six element 15, it's bent right around the, um, you know, the pole uh, and also the pole bill too. So, so those are some of the, uh, the issues that I deal with. Uh, and uh, the, certainly the, the ice load and the guide wire is, is, is troubling. Um, and I hate climbing in the winter. You know, and I was listening to a talk yesterday, which is so true. Do not climb in the winter. Uh, but when you run a contest station, they're, they're not moving the date for that contest, uh, so, so you got to get up there, and, and I absolutely hate, hate doing that. But one of the things that uh, I'm going to get into is controlling the stacks, the phase line. Most uh, uh, ways that uh, uh, people approach this problem is, is using quarter wave uh, kind of uh, matching networks for, for the elements. Nothing uh, new here. Uh, I use uh, vacuum uh, relays up on, up on the tower. Real there, you know, the point there, of course, is insertion loss and reliability, et cetera. But the key point here is controlling this darn thing. Over 15 years, uh, and, you know, the switch box in each one of the, the stations gets to be a nightmare. Uh, and inside here, uh, being an RF guy, I think of logic as diodes. Uh, so I started using diodes for different uh, uh, logic uh, uh, combinations. And, of course, after you've been losing sleep and this thing starts to fail in a contest environment, what's in there? And you open it up and it's just a, a horrible sight. Um, but I've used that for, for years and years, and it does work. Um, but what I decided to do is take the microcontroller uh, from Hamstack and see if I can apply it toward uh, you know, solving this problem. It's a nice uh, um, eight relay board. Uh, that relay board is up on the tower. Obviously, I'm not running RF through that. Uh, it's relays controlling relays, which I get is a little bit uh, silly. I could use open collectors as other approaches. But, you know, this is out of the box, and I decided to apply it. So that eight relay board over 485 is up on the tower, and in the shack is uh, the box uh, up at the top. And each one of those buttons uh, is certainly uh, uh, controlling uh, the combinations for the phased uh, antennas. Uh, Watertight, as I said earlier, uh, the Northeast is pretty tricky when it comes to humidity, moisture, all those kind of kind of things. I ran 485, uh, that shielded Belden uh, cable, um, pretty pretty expensive stuff, but you know a good thousand uh, uh, feet of that is you know, 150, 200 bucks. Um, but I put this up on the tower and ran that back back into the shack. 485 is uh, has a good a good distance that you can run it. These are uh, nothing, nothing fancy. Home Depot boxes sitting up on on the up on the, the towers. No, no, I'm sorry. That's a that's a that's a, a hard line uh, a protocol. Um, that you know, so it's hard line. It's not RF. But I'm going to talk about RF up to the up to the tower here in a minute. Okay. So, so is that a single conductor then, or multi-conductor? Two two conductors plus ground. Okay. Okay. 
and I'll get into that in a minute. The, the question was, you know, 485, what is it? I'm certainly not an expert on, on these kinds of things, but uh, uh, George and, and uh, this, uh, uh, John Best recommended this would be the best for hard line uh, between the shack and, and the tower. But one thing I've been experimenting with is uh, wireless, and, and so that's a good tee up for what I'll be talking about. The, the uh, control head sitting in, on the shack, each button is, is controlling the, the relays up on the tower. Um, eight relays, I don't need all that, but uh, certainly uh, um, you know, more, than, more than enough. The thing I want to hit on here is you know, running a, a, a contest station, I like to have everything clean, 48 hours of, of no sleep, certainly you know, being dead tired. I want it to look nice. I, I have nothing to do with this company, but this is a company called Front Panel Express. Um, it's a software package. You, you lay it out. Beautiful. It comes back um, looking just like that. And it's uh, you know, 150, 200 bucks for for a panel. But the nice part is, it's all software controlled. You just lay it out, hit the button, the Federal Express is uh, back to your back to your house. So you know, if you wanted something, to, if you're the the home hobbyist and you want to make it look like you've done something professional, I highly recommend these guys. They do a, they do a great job. Expensive, but uh, again, high quality. And I have five uh, you know run stations, five uh, uh, search and pod stations. So yeah this up. You know, I spent some serious money on, on these boxes. However, they look they look great. To your question, again, 485, well, the old way is that rat's nest, right? The box with, you know, wires coming out of it. Uh, I'm using the Cat5 cable, which is more than I need for 485. And the future is wireless. Um, there are some really nice uh, mesh networks out there that are, you know, $40, $50 uh, that I'm experimenting with. So, Right now, you know, the CAT5 or the 485 uh, is, is the approach. I'm experimenting with controlling all these relays in the, in the uh, environment. And uh, the next thing I'll talk about is a compass and how I used a uh, wireless mesh network uh, for that. And here they are. They're uh, the Zigbee uh, RF modules. They make a Wi-Fi, a Zigbee, DigiMesh, and GPS receiver is another one. Uh, I'm using the, uh, the Zigbee, um, which is, like I say, they're 40, 50 bucks. Uh, these little uh, boxes, the carriers, um, Hamstack uh, produces those as well, and I think they charge like $20 uh, for them. But they're great little uh, um, you know, wireless networks. The other thing, too, they make a 60 uh, milliwatt one, which has a pretty good uh, range. They also make a one watt, uh, which is down, I think, around 900 uh, megahertz. Uh, so you can get some pretty good range out of these. And you can set up a multi-field uh, of, of these kinds of uh, uh, networks. So the other thing that uh, uh, we're experimenting with is you know, how do you control this via uh, the iPhone? Uh, Rich, who is a, a fellow here in the audience, and several have come by, you know, how do I take this uh, network and really pump it over the internet and use it as remote control? And that's one of the things that I'm going to go do. Running a contest station, I just I like to have these radios sitting on bands, and I don't want to take them offline. But I'm going to take one offline and experiment. How do we take all of these piece parts, which certainly can control a station, has all the capability, but it's certainly not configured to do that. And so over the next probably three, four, six months, probably take me a year, uh, I'm going to take this and, and try to, well, not try, I will, uh, make this into a station automation. So if I'm sitting in China or I'm sitting down the street, how do I control it and do things like a heartbeat so you know if indeed you lose connection with your station and your remote it'll actually know that you're disconnected and shut the station down gracefully uh, if you get to a you know an out of uh, range temperature condition on your amplifier it'll shut the station down or cool it off if you disconnect so all of these kinds of concepts I'm going to start experimenting with but I think the piece parts that these hand stack guys have come up with uh, will enable me to uh, to do that and they've written some code for, for uh, you know, the iPhone to control it uh, via Wi-Fi. All right, this is, this is a fun one for me. There's a, a little uh, Honeywell device, which is a magnetometer, uh, a compass. It pumps out I2C code, uh, and I learned what that was, and I started writing uh, uh, some code to uh, control um, a remote, uh, you know, visible or, or viewing of, of the compass. So this thing is about two degrees accurate. Uh, it's certainly overkill for any kind of Yagi, but the Earth, Moon, Earth guys, and there's one up here right before me, and I were talking yesterday, you know, for 
you know, direction, but we need you know, elevation as well. But this is a perfect application for, for Earth, Moon, Earth, or some highly accurate uh, kind of uh, direction. I actually put this on a four element 40 meters at about 150 feet. So obviously the beam width is, is huge compared to a two, two uh, uh, degree axis or, or uh, uh, accuracy. But what I, uh, you know, we breadboarded it up to see if uh, we could actually pump I2C code into a, mic or into a PIC microcontroller, and, and certainly we did. Works, uh, works well. Took a little bit of time, again, to understand what uh, these protocols are. I'm, again, I'm not a digital uh, guy. Put it in a, a nice watertight box, and this is the same box that's sitting up at 150 feet on this uh, four-element Yagi. Uh, it's using a little Zigbee uh, uh, mesh network, so a, a wireless connection from the tower uh, down to the to the ham shack. Again, it's a way overkill for for uh, um, a 40-meter uh, antenna, but you know, a cute experiment. Uh, these boxes are commercial grade that uh, they use for the the telephone company. They they work well, or the um, I should say the uh, uh, the cell companies. Um, a friend of mine wrote some software uh, that takes the uh, um, you know the information and actually displays it on a on a compass rose uh, with declination and, and heading. Uh, that's just a JPEG file you could drop it in. I live in New Hampshire, but that thing I think is in uh, Houston or, or down in Texas someplace. Um, so the the next thing I want to talk about is a high power dummy load. Again, I'm just going over each one of these uh, uh, projects. Um, I took some some uh, uh, high power uh, resistors, not a very elegant or not a very uh, uh, challenging uh, kind of an experiment. But you know, what would I do with a, a microcontroller uh, for uh, you know a, a dummy load and you know temperature, uh, making sure that there's not an overcurrent kind of thing, a visoir uh, um, condition. So it was kind of fun. This is actually uh, uh, one of the things that I did over over a weekend. Again, you'll see that this uh, is very well laid out with it, with uh, Front Panel Express. These are some RF um, uh, devices, RF uh, uh, Florida RF uh, devices. They're 400 watts, 250 ohms each. Um, they, they're pretty darn expensive. I think they're like 150 50 bucks a, a piece, sitting on a pretty good size uh, a carrier. A uh, little bit of uh, matching to make sure it was, uh, uh, you know, true at, uh, at higher frequencies. Um, the ham stack uh, sitting on to the right. Again, it isn't all uh, 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 neat and wire wrapped, but um, the goal here was to, to, to sense the temperature, sense visoir, uh, just to make sure that this thing was running in a uh, you know in a good condition. Uh, kind of a fun little project. I don't really use it, but uh, you know, again, it's one of those things to you know to experiment around with and, and have some fun with. The one that's on the bench right now uh, is a high power amplifier. Uh, using a 3CX1500Z. What I wanted to do, and again, you can see the progression. I am just keep experimenting with microcontrollers and think about things that I can do. This is a fun one for me. I, again, being an RF engineer, um, you know, using it in a contest environment, using a 3CX1500Z or 1500CX, auto-tune using stepper motors, and there's where I'm going to start really learning, uh, you know, how to control uh, devices with, with, a, with a pick. Um, the, the hardware is built. Uh, it works. Uh, had a few problems when you start heating up, a, you know, a, a 4,000 uh, volts at, at, a, at an amp. Things can go wrong, and they did. Um, power supply sitting to the right, but the next, and here's the, uh, the pick, the uh, pick down in the bottom right. The next thing that I'm doing is, is writing the code and understanding how do you control um, stepper motors for, um, you know, tuning and you know, what are the parameters you need to monitor, how do you get to the optimum uh, uh, performance. So that's where I'm at right now. The amplifier works, the microcontroller's in there. I have all the parameters that I'm reading for, you know, grid, plate, visoir, all the conditions, and now I need to figure out, like, I need to write the code uh, to control this thing. This one, for me, um, is going to be the biggest challenge, again, because I'm going to have to learn a, a, a lot about microcontrollers and, and, you know, figuring out and write the math to figure out how to get to the optimum uh, uh, performance. A fun one uh, uh, for darn sure. 
living in the Northeast, Tom and I were talking. Um, I burn oil, and uh, so again, I had this wild idea. You know, how do I figure out the the right temperature outside, inside, and really optimize the oil burn? So I use a microcontroller for that. Nothing uh, earth shattering here, but just yet again, another way that I thought, okay, how could I take this digital, uh, you know, learning that I have and really apply it for uh, uh, for home heating? Um, a little plug for these guys. This uh, is the, the Hamstack uh, CPU board. Uh, they sell them in kits assembled, uh, relays. There's all sorts of uh, different assemblies. The whole idea of this Hamstack is really uh, a PIC microcontroller with a good uh, source code or a good selection of source code shareware uh, for the ham radio community. All of this has been done for different uh, uh, parts of the, the hobbyists, but we're all a bunch of hams. And really, you know, how do you take a, a microcontroller and really use it in a ham type environment? So all the code that I've written for either motor control, compass, all that's up on their website. Uh, and the, the, the concept is you can stack things on top. Uh, the two relay board, the Zigbee, it's all uh, it's all stackable. This is the uh, the, the platform, the project uh, board. Everything that I do uh, sits on top of this, so the ham stack will go right on top of this. This has the switching power supply, uh, I/O, uh, RS-232, IPO oscillators. So it's just a nice, uh, uh, easy way uh, to start bolting things together and, and getting started. The, uh, I've already talked about this. So let me just talk about what the ham stack really is and, and how does it, uh, is it work. So the first board will go down, the, the, the CPU board sits in the center, and the accessory boards will, will uh, go on, on top of it. And they plug in nicely uh, right on the, uh, on the pins. And then there's this project board that sits below it, and they all assemble together. The goal there is you can mix and match for the different combinations, whether you want a relay board, you want a, uh, uh, you know, a digi-mesh uh, kind of a network, and, and so it's really a selection of, of items. What uh, these guys are, are starting to do, too, is, is build uh, you know, complete solutions, whether it be for radio uh, control, um, like I said, the compass and all that, they actually uh, have it the, uh, uh, in the booth. So the, the idea is you could either, as a hobbyist, uh, bolt things together and really uh, you know, play around with different combinations or a, a, complete, uh, a complete solution. This is probably the biggest uh, a challenge for me, being an, an RF guy, is learning software. Uh, I was never uh, a software developer. I, I spent zero time, and, and I know there's a big uh, controversy between is it C, is it basic, is it assembly, I, I, and I don't want to even you know, partake in all that. But uh, the, I started with uh, Swordfish Basic. It's some guys out of the UK. Uh, it's a, there's a free version that takes you up to a certain limit. Uh, it's pretty darn good. Um, but again, I always start with something that someone else has done and, and reverse engineer it and start using it. And again, there's a, there's a large library of uh, software up on their website. And again, I would strongly encourage if, if you want to uh, experiment around with PIC programming is to take one of the programs and, uh, and start reverse engineering it and learning from it and apply it. The PIC kit uh, in circuit programmer, uh, you have to get the information from the compiler onto uh, the PIC, and this is a, a way to, uh, to bring the code, uh, optic code, onto, uh, onto the PIC. Uh, all this is, is uh, you know, tried and true and, and certainly been done for, for a long time, so nothing uh, really earth shattering. Uh, later today, uh, Dr. John Best, he'll, he'll talk about C programming. Uh, and really get into to the examples of, of you know, hardcore uh, code writing and, and why C is better than basic and he can explain it and, and I'm sure he'll, he'll convince you. But for me, I'm not that smart, so I just start right here with uh, visual ba or, uh, basic and, and uh, take it from there. Um, you know, the, the, the quick and summary is, you know, I, I definitely uh, was motivated by my friends who, who said, you know, take your contest station and, and automate the darn thing. Start using PIC controllers uh, as a way to control this darn thing, move away from the rat's nest, and, and I'm glad they did. Um, I was certainly reluctant to, to do it because I thought I would be spending a heck of a lot of time 
uh, in an area that I personally didn't really have much love or, or uh, desire uh, because of you know being the, an RF guy. Um, you can do all this stuff, I'm sure, with R's and C's and 555's and diodes for logic and all that kind of stuff. But as you saw, you know, that's just a rat's nest and just a, a way to, to, to go wrong. Um, and I encourage you to give it a try. Again, I, I certainly did. I would not consider myself a, an expert, but I certainly uh, have learned enough where I can apply it. So it was just short and sweet. Any, uh, any questions? Yes. 